what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Is everybody ready to go? It's proclaim the greatest radio show. Jim Stella and Johnny Parlay with the facts. So relax, grab a drink, then let's get back. Thanks everybody for tuning in to today's episode of The Spread. I am Jim Sella. I'm in studio with my buddy Jay Dash. How are you doing today? All right, ready for, I guess, the Stiller game this weekend. Yeah, I mean, if we lose to another O in whatever team, it's going to be a pretty depressing week for the Steelers. Yeah, you can always get excited about fantasy, though, right? You are our fantasy guru. You love fantasy football. I've had terrible fantasy teams and quit in the middle of the season and made you run my <laughs> team a couple times, and I almost made the playoffs. So, if you know, I, I pretty much take what you say as God. Well, let's get in the running backs here. There, There's a couple elite running backs you got to play every week. Unless they're on a bye or hurt, I guess. Uh, DeMarco Murray, Le'Veon Bell, Marshawn Lynch, Matt Forte, Giovanni Bernard, Jamal Charles, McCoy, and Arian Foster. Now, if someone in your league wants to get rid of McCoy because he had two bad weeks, go get him. Well, in your league, I think most people would leave these dudes in even if they were on a bye week because they, they're all pretty stupid. So. Yeah, that's why my fantasy league's dumb, but that's, <laughs> that's besides the point. But there's a couple other running backs I like this week, starting with Rashad Jennings versus Atlanta. They have the worst run defense in the NFL, pretty much. And for fantasy purposes, they do. And they let up three TDs to Asiata last week. You know, Rashad Jennings was what, a sleeper pick for Matthew Barry from ESPN at the beginning of the year. He fits exactly what the Giants like to do running the ball. He's a single back runner. Uh, he doesn't need a full back in front of him. And the Giants like to use that spread offense and spread the whole field out and let Jennings find holes. So, he, I mean, he could be a good pickup. Well, what do you know? Matthew Berry does know something. Something. And then uh, uh, Justin Forsett at a Indy. Indy's a middle-of-the-league team, but Forsett looks like the main back right now in Baltimore, and he's had double digits each week in PPR leagues. Yeah, I mean, that always helps with the PPR league and catching the ball out of the backfield. We all know how much Ray Rice would do it whenever he wasn't beating his wife. Um, so, I mean, that might be an interesting pickup for the week, but I don't know if I would go with him long term. I just don't like Baltimore's offense long term. Oh, no. Th these are all just for this week. And another one you might not like long term is Frank Gore. I know he used to be a beast. He He's not looking so much anymore. He did have a big week last week, but he is going up against a pretty good run defense in KC. But th they need to give him the ball 20 times if they want to win. Yeah, they moved on from Marcus Lattimore. I think it was Marcus Lattimore they cut him after. They spending. have Carlos Hyde too, but yeah. I, I still like Gore more. Yeah, Gore's a better back. He's a veteran back. He knows how to pick his holes. He still runs low to the ground. So, I mean, he could give you at least one or two good games. Another guy I like is Chris Ivory. He, Chris Johnson got to go. Yeah, that dude's just garbage. Once he lost his speed, he had nothing. And, it, I mean, the same thing happened to Willie Parker, as much as I love him. Those speed backs, once they lose it, they got nothing. Yeah, and the Jets are going into San Diego this week, who let up the ninth most points to fantasy running backs. Ivory looks like a beast. He runs people over. I'd put him in your lineup if you're looking for a running back. Another guy here is Ahmad Bradshaw. Now, he goes up against Baltimore, and they let up the fifth fewest points to running backs. But he's killing it in the passing game, and you have to keep playing him because he is dominating right now. Yeah, Andrew Luck's killing it. Uh, Reggie Wayne's playing well. So, you know, I mean, it makes sense for Bradshaw to be playing well. It opens up the underneath throws to him. And in PPR leagues, man, you, you got to play him if you got him. And then there's three other guys here who are probably on benches right now. you got to put them in your lineup if you need a running back. Uh, Jeremy Hill at New England, they let up the fourth most to running backs, and he scored the past two weeks. New England's defense isn't what it used to be. They're gaping holes through the line, gaping holes in, in the secondary. So, I mean, if you have Hill, I would play him. Um, if he's on your waiver wire and you just think you can insert him into maybe a flex position, you might even want to do that. And Penn ben Tate is supposedly coming back this week. If he does... I like him because he should be the lead back in Cleveland still. I mean, what's his name? I don't even remember his name. He ran all over us. So, Terrence I mean, West. Yeah, I mean, you put Ben Tate behind an offensive line that can actually block. He's going to put up points. And one last guy. He's getting more and more touches each week, and we we thought he was going to come into the season as a starter. Is 
Bishop Sankey versus Cleveland, who has a terrible run defense. His touches are on the rise, like I said, and he did score a touchdown last week. So if you need a running back, go get Sankey and put him in your lineup. His name kind of reminds me of like a flavor of coffee. I don't know why. (laughs) A couple guys I'm sitting this week are, uh, you're probably going to have to play this first guy, but I I would sit him if you can, is Monty Ball versus Arizona. They have a great run defense, and he's only had 26 carries and no TDs over the last two games. Yeah, people expected Ball to have a big year. Uh, He's kind of tailed off a little bit, you know, compared to what they thought he was going to do, so he, he may not be the best person to play this week. And then uh, C.J. Spiller at Detroit, he he's off and on. He's very inconsistent, and this is not a week to put him in the lineup. They're going up against a good Detroit run defense, and Jackson's the better play this week because they're going to use him out of the backfield, and he's a b- better running back out of the backfield. Spiller, I drafted him one year, and he would kill it, and then he would do nothing for two weeks, and then he'd kill it. Um, he returns the ball, so you always have opportunity for points there. But I, I don't like him as a fantasy player. I'm not saying as a person. But, uh, you, you know, I, I don't think I'd play him. And then a uh, couple more here. Donald Brown, sit him. Play whoever you can over him. He has 41 carries and 81 yards. That's terrible. Uh, Toby Gerhart, sit him. He only has 26 carries over the last three games. He hasn't hit double digits in fantasy yet. D- Get rid of him. If anybody wants him, get whatever you can for them. And then the Saints running backs, they got uh, Robinson and Pierre Thomas. They're not, neither one's getting the ball enough. You know they're a passing team. Sit the Saints running backs. Yeah, outside of Sproles or Bush, uh, Saints running backs have never really been a good pickup for fantasy. They just don't get the touches. They don't throw the ball too much. (laughs) Deuce. He he was all right. I like Deuce McAllister. Anyways, then we got a couple guys here. If you're in a really deep league and there is no running backs out there, maybe Andre Williams is available. Like we said, Atlanta lets up the most points to fantasy running backs. And he did have 15 carries last week and scored. So maybe maybe the Giants get up early and Williams does get some carries and gets into the end zone for you. And then one more is... This is a long shot, but LeGarrette Blunt. If if the Steelers can get up on Jacksonville in the first half, they showed against Carolina that they will run Blunt, and he showed he can get it done. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a 12-team league and all the good backs are taken and you got a guy on a bye week, it's definitely worth a shot. You would think that the Steelers can be able to get up big on Jacksonville. Everybody else has. So, I mean, he, he may get in the end zone. He gets the goal line carries even, so that could even help. It doesn't even have to be the second half. All right, then there's two stashes here. Jarek McKinnon already played this week. He didn't have the greatest week, but they also were playing a, a terrible quarterback in Christian, Christian Ponder. Ponder. Yeah, he's terrible. He looked good when Bridgewater was in, so I'd pick him up. I like him more than Asiata. He's only owned in 46% of Yahoo leagues, so pick him up, stash him on your bench. And the other one is that Talia Farrow from Baltimore. He's only owned in 36% of the leagues. He might not be the best play this week, but he scored two straight weeks. And he had 15-plus carries, so he looks like he's getting more and more playing time, and he's not owned in enough legs, so pick him up. Well, that wraps up our running back segment of our running back wide receivers, and now we're going to move into them. Um, to me, if you have on uh, Antonio Brown or Megatron, you're, you're money. Am I yeah, right those are two guys you have to start, along with Julio Jones and Demarius Thomas. There's also Des Bryant and A.J. Green. Start those guys. Start them all. What if you have all of those guys on your team? Then you need to start making trades for <laughs> elite quarterbacks and running backs. But uh, another guy that's in elite that elite category is Brandon Marshall. He's had two bad weeks, though, so just like LaShawn McCoy, if someone wants to get rid of him, go get him right now and then put him in your starting lineup from here on out. Yeah, some people are stupid and they panic when uh, good players have a, a bad, you know, one or two weeks at the beginning of the year. They got to remember these these great players usually don't play a lot in the preseason. So I got Jamal Charles that way. So yeah, I mean, if you can get Marshall for almost anything, I mean, other than Brown or you know one of the guys you just named, I'd trade right. for him. Now there's a couple. There's four other must starts here. They're they're not the elite elite wide receivers, but right now you must start them. And the first one is Steve Smith at Indy. Yeah, Smith killed it last week. You got a little lucky with that tipped catch from uh, Owen Daniels. He assisted on it. Um, he's but, been a beast all year, though. I, mean, I tell you what, though, he's not going to be a beast all season long. So 
Now might be the time to sell on Steve Smith. I play him if you got him, but I'm also trying to get rid of him. Now, three other guys I have that are must-starts are Jeremy Macklin versus St. Louis, Alshon Jeffrey at Carolina, and Emmanuel Sanders versus Arizona. But like I said, no matter who these guys play, you've got to be starting them right now. Emmanuel Sanders is a traitor. He left the Steelers for Denver and then called uh, Peyton Manning better than Ben Roethlisberger, so I wouldn't even sign that guy. But that's just my opinion, and I don't even play fancy football. <laughs> I think he's right about that, though. That's the problem. No, well, I mean, Ben has more Super Bowls, so that's all I'm worried about. Okay, uh, a couple other receivers I like this week that you definitely should get in your starting lineup. F first is Kelvin Benjamin. He's going up against Chicago. They let up the ninth most fantasy points to wide receivers this season and he's had th three big weeks out of the four weeks this season and he is slowly climbing into that must play range yeah benjamin's huge man he's the only receiving option they have down there in carolina um owen daniels is doing okay but as far as the wide Jericho. receivers go uh, i mean country hasn't done anything down there though. yeah That's i understand the thing. i just like him no i like the dude but i mean if you're not catching passes you're not getting in my lineup I also like Keenan Allen this week versus the Jets. They let up the third most fantasy points to wide receivers. And like I projected last week, he had a huge week with 10 catches and 135 yards, and I expect it to stay the same this week. So it just seems like if you're a running back or a wide receiver and you're going against the Jets, you should be in the lineup. No. Donald Brown. <laughs> Oh. You know, I said don't play Donald Brown. Right. Brown. Donald Brown is garbage. Don't play him, people. If you're just listening to the wide receiver segment, just catch this for running backs. Don't play Donald Brown. But I do play San Diego receivers, Keenan Allen and Eddie Royal. Eddie Royal has been a beast so far. He scored four TDs over the past two weeks. I do sell high on this guy, though, if anybody wants him. Uh, you know, I don't know. He's one of those guys that you can get. They do good. They don't do good. Uh, he's just too inconsistent for me. Yeah, he hasn't been inconsistent really this year. That's why right now is the time to sell. Yeah, I mean, I guess it goes year to year with him. He has a big year and then he has a down year. So I, mean, I see what you're saying. Michael Floyd at Denver. I know Drew Stanton is the quarterback there. Once Carson Palmer comes back, he'll be even better. But right now, he already has two 100-yard games. So, and they're like we said, they're going to need to pass. So play Michael Floyd. Yeah, as dumb as I think it is, Carolina or Carolina, Arizona's kind of made Floyd their uh, number one receiver ahead of Larry Fitzgerald. Larry's getting old. I, I, yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter. Larry Fitzgerald catches anything within a 25-mile radius of his hand, so I'd be throwing that ball or throwing that dude the ball every time. A couple other guys I put in my lineup this week. It would be DeAndre Hopkins at Dallas. They've been okay against the pass, but he's been very consistent with double digits each week. Uh, Roddy White just came back from injury last week, and he had 14 targets and a TD, so get him in your lineup. And then Vincent Jackson did okay last week versus the Steelers. Without that touchdown at the end of the game, he would have pretty much done nothing. But Mike Evans is injured now. Glennon's in. New Orleans defense is bad against the pass, so play Vincent Jackson. Yeah, I mean, he did all right against the Steelers. He caught that pass and ruined my day. So, I mean, other than that, I don't really know what else to say about him except I hate him. I also play the Indy wide receivers this week versus Baltimore. They're the... They've led up the seventh most to fantasy wide receivers. And T.Y. Hilton has 38 targets in the past four games. So he's getting looks. Play him for sure. And I like Wayne too. Yeah, Wayne's surprising coming off that ACL injury. He's playing really well. Uh, T.Y. Hilton's playing all right. A um, little problem with his route running, but he's getting the targets. So if you have either or both of those guys, Luck is putting the ball up in the air this year a lot. So they're a good play. And Denver's going up against a good pass defense in Arizona. But the, they're the... Manning's going to have to look over the middle of the field this week. They, they're they good on the outside, so Welker may be a good play this week. Yeah, I mean, as long as nobody hits him in the head and he doesn't get knocked out of the game, I think he'll be all right. The yeah. New Orleans wide receivers are must plays. If you're ever going to get big points out of them, this is going to be the week because they play the worst pass defense in Tampa Bay, and you've seen what the Steelers did against them. <clears throat> New Orleans receivers, always a good play. It seems like it, but they got so many options out there that a lot of the times the person you play has a down week. Well, yeah, if you're me, but if you're anybody else, then you pick the right guy and then you beat me. So, And then Hawkins from Cleveland. He's only in 40% of Yahoo leagues. This guy is good. He, he gets 10-plus targets in every game, and he's been getting it done. He's had double digits in every game. I don't know why he's only owned in this many leagues. 
people got to pick him up and start playing him. Who would you say he plays for? Cleveland? Cleveland. Well, that's why he's owned in 40% of leagues. Nobody wants a Cleveland wide receiver. Oh, if Josh Gordon was playing, he'd be owned by everybody. Well, uh, he's a freak, so it's a different story. A couple people I don't like this week are Washington receivers. Garcon and Deshaun Jackson going up against Seattle. Cousins look terrible. He, he just looks like he's getting worse. Yeah, everybody thought he'd come in and take RG3's job. As bad as RG3 played, I think Cousins played even worse. So I definitely don't see that happening, and I wouldn't play any of his wide receivers because he can't even get him the ball. Uh, Torrey Smith has been garbage all season. I'm done with this guy. Steve Smith's the guy you want in Baltimore. Torrey Smith doesn't even get that many looks from Flacco anymore. If anybody wants him for anything valuable to you, do it. Yeah, Smith's just a deep threat. Uh, You don't even need him. Go Steve Smith. Get the right one. Then there's Sammy Watkins. He may be an okay play this week, but they're putting Cal Wharton in a quarterback, which may actually help in the end, but I have to see it first. Yeah, you know, Buffalo's a bad team. A lot of controversy at the quarterback position. Uh, wide receiver can't get the ball to himself, so I, I don't think I'd play him either. I have two by low receivers here. Uh, the Giants, Reuben Randall. It doesn't matter who the, he's going up against this week. You may not want to play him, but he's getting more and more looks every week, so... The, whoever has him probably isn't that happy with him and maybe looking to get rid of him. Maybe you can get him for something you don't even want. Maybe it is uh, Torrey Smith. I'd, I'd trade Torrey Smith for Ruben Randall right now. And then Marcus Wheaton, uh, he's getting more looks too. Big Ben is looking his way. He's making good catches. I buy low on Marcus Wheaton. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at every option. Uh, you got to look at matchups. I know a couple times I've signed two guys out of waivers and then traded those two guys for somebody else's starter and got mad points. So, you know, Ruben Randall, um, he returns punts sometimes. Uh, Wheaton is playing well in Pittsburgh. He's getting the ball more and more each week, making some pretty impressive catches. So they're, they're both interesting plays. Uh, a couple waiver pickups here. Allen Robinson is going up against Pittsburgh this week, and he's only owned in 14% of Yahoo. Like we said, they're missing some of their top receivers, and I like him even when their receiving core is healthy. I think he's going to get more and more playing time as the year goes along, more more and more catches, and more and more fantasy points. And I pick him up and at least stash him on your bench and maybe play him if you need a wide receiver. Well, you're the fantasy guru, man, so if you tell me to pick up Robinson, I think I'm just going to go pick up Robinson. I don't even have a team, and I think I'm about to go pick up Robinson. Well, this next guy tell you you're not going to pick up anyways, even if you did have a team. It's Miles Austin. I no, know I you don't Miles like this Austin. guy, but let me tell you, he has 17 targets over the past two weeks, and he scored in both games. So if you're hurting on wide receivers, you're looking for something on the waiver wire, he's only owned in 12% of the league. So go pick him up and put him in your lineup. To me, if you're all the way down to Miles Austin as one of your wide receivers, you might as well just give up. Hey, some sometimes things happen. You when a couple injuries, couple buys, you're down to Miles Austin. And then one last here is Jordan Matthews from Philly. I, I'd pick him up and play him this week if you really, really need a wide receiver. He's been inconsistent, extremely inconsistent, but he does have high upside, and he's going to start in a slot for Philly. So he could come up with a big play or two and get you the win if if it's a deep leg. Uh, if you have any questions, look us up. Hook us up on a spread. Throw us a question. We'll answer it for you. We're always following our Twitter account. Yeah, tweet us a question or something. We'll answer. Yeah, we got your back. But thanks, everybody, for listening. Dash, thank you for sitting in. Uh, maybe Johnny Parley might actually be coming in the studio today. We don't really know. So we're just probably going to have to knock these all out ourselves. Uh-oh. So be prepared I, to be talking all night, buddy. I can't do that comedy stuff you do. Oh, you love it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a great night.